Bonjour. Let's continue our exploration of combinational circuits by demonstrating various forms of negators. These are circuits that can turn a positive value into a negative value or a negative value into a positive value. When asked to negate a number using standard decimal arithmetic notation, it is pretty easy. Negate positive 26. Okay, the result is negative 26. So now let's try it in binary. Negate 0001-1010. This is not so easy. If you remember our lessons on sine binary numbers, you know that we need to establish the form of the numbers. In one's complement form, the negated value would be 1110-0101. This comes from inverting each bit individually. In two's complement form, it would be 1110-0110. This comes from taking the one's complement result and adding one to it. Keep in mind these procedures as we move forward. Why is negating so useful? One common application is to help us perform subtraction. As you may recall, an easy way to subtract in binary is to apply the twos complement operation to the subtrahend and then add the two inputs. In other words, don't subtract a positive number, but rather add a negative number. So how can we perform the negation? In these upcoming examples, we will use four bits, but the strategies can be applied to any number of bits. For the ones complement operation, the circuit is extremely simple. We simply pass each input bit through a NOT gate. This comes from the definition of the ones complement operation, which is to complement each bit individually. So this is the entire circuit. I show it using both binary switches on the left and a hex keyboard on the right. Either way, each input bit passes through an individual NOT gate. Now for the twos complement operation. Recall that this is defined as the ones complement result plus one. So that is exactly what the circuit does. This set of NOT gates does the ones complement operation. This incrementer adds one to the result. The plus five volt signal holds a value of logic one, which means that the increment operation is always activated. Be careful when interpreting these hex values. The hex keyboard and display assume unsigned binary. In order for us to interpret in two's complement form, we need to look at the binary values. So here, the output of hex A means binary 1010. In two's complement form, this converts to decimal as negative six. This is good news because our input was positive six. You might remember that a couple lessons back, we designed a four bit negator following the formal design procedure. That device accomplishes the same thing as the current device, even though the internal circuit is different and the design approach differed. Back then, we began with a truth table and derived Boolean equations. Now we are applying the two-step two's complement procedure using blocks of logic gates for each step. No truth table or equations were developed. There are many ways to skin a cat. We will continue to apply both design approaches as we move forward in the course. There is an extra feature that would be nice to include with these negators, the option of turning on or off the operation. Currently, both of these circuits are forced. They negate all the time. To provide an option, we will take advantage of a special way of interpreting the exclusive OR gate. This is still just a regular exclusive OR gate. You can see that the truth table is the same. But now, let's call one input the control and one input the data. Whenever control equals zero, notice how the output equals the data input. Whenever control equals one, notice that the output is the complement of the data input. In other words, 
when c equals zero, the gate acts like a buffer, meaning there is no change. When c equals one, the gate acts like a not gate. Let's see this applied to the ones complement circuit. Here, I have replaced the four not gates with four exclusive OR gates. I also included an extra switch, which feeds into each of those gates. This switch is the control, and its notation explains what it does. When you see a slash in the name of an input, it usually means that it lets you choose one mode or another. The mode with a prime next to it is activated with a signal of zero. The mode without a prime is activated with a signal of one. So in this circuit, a low control signal turns off the negation. Notice on the left how the input is 0, 1, 1, 0, and the output is 0, 1, 1, 0. No change occurred. But a high control signal turns on the negation. On the right, the input of 0, 1, 1, 0 becomes an output of 1, 0, 0, 1. It is elegant and useful how the exclusive OR gate provides us this control. Let's see how this control switch can be used for the twos complement circuit. As expected, the left half is simply the ones complement operation done with exclusive OR gates. The right half is again the incrementer, but now the ink input is not always on. It will only be on when the control switch is high. Perhaps most insightful is to explore what happens when the control switch is low. With a signal of zero, there is no change through these exclusive OR gates. And then there is no change through the incrementer. That will conclude this lesson. Of mild importance are the schematics and operations of these specific negator circuits. Of more importance is A, the new design strategy where we match arithmetic steps to separate blocks of logic, and B, the concept of control switches and how they can be applied.